in the tenth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a demon named Dantavakra. Tenth canto is specifically dedicated to Lord Krishna and his pastimes when he was in this material realm 5000 years back. And in that there are many demons which are mentioned which who Krishna killed. But there's one demon named Dantavakra. He is very special. Well, there's something very interesting about this demon. I'll not go into the details that we will do in some other video, but how he was killed actually. So when he saw Krishna, he was he was he was very much angry with Krishna always, like all the other other demons. And then what happened? When he was about to fight with Krishna, then he started running. He was running, 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 and he was about to hit Krishna, but then what happened? <laughs> he was so angry, he was so angry, he was so angry that he forgot to take his club. <laughs> he was he was running and then and as soon as he reached near Krishna's chariot, Krishna gave him one blow, tuck, and he was knocked off. So that is how Dantavakra was killed by Krishna. Well, now you may be wondering that this video is about Ketu's transit into Purva Shada. And how is that story, how is this story linked to Ketu or how is it linked to Purva Shada? Well, it's very much linked because our behavior can be something similar. That we focus so much on the goal sometimes that we forget the process we get so much obsessed with the milestone that we forgot why why at all we were running or maybe we are running we we are aware of the goal but we forget what is the end result of obtaining this goal will it be beneficial for us or will it not be or we are just angry and we want to prove ourselves and then we have to cut a sorry figure later on or we are thinking that just by proving to somebody that I am better than you or I am better than him or her I will become superior to somebody and in the midst of that we forget that we have our own limitations we forget sometimes that we may be better than somebody in some area of our life, but that person may be better than us in some area of, in some other area of our life. And do we accept that fact or do we behave like an ostrich? Do you know what an ostrich does? Whenever an ostrich sees that there is a danger, what he does is he digs a hole in the ground and he puts his head down. He convinces himself that the danger is not there anymore world is free of danger there is no problem in this world everything is perfectly fine but that doesn't solve the problem because the danger was it is and it still will be there always as in these scriptures it is also said padam padam yad vipadam natesha that this material world every step padam padam yat vipadam vipada means danger difficulties obstacles Tackles, struggles, disappointments, delays, setbacks. These are characteristics of the material realm. Alright, so this is a very interesting story which you can find in the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And yes, if you already know this story, who was he? Why Krishna killed him? Of course, I mean, he was a demon and he was terrorizing everybody. That's why Krishna killed. But what exactly is the story behind then you can please write it in the comments all right it is there in the 10th canto you can go and read sometimes all right and yes as usual if you are new then please like comment share and subscribe and if you want a consultation from me regarding how this transit will behave uh, how this transit will affect you and how it will impact your own horoscope then you can go to my website to book a reading you will find the link of the website down in the description section below and yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. <laughs> Just like Dantvakra found him. Of course, he found him in a not so good way. <laughs>
okay so now what purvashada is purvashada is a very divine nakshatra it has many divine qualities because it is under the sign sagittarius in fact all the divinity of sagittarius is inside this nakshatra sagittarius is divine because of this nakshatra this nakshatra is not divine because of sagittarius <laughs> all right because <coughs> this the nakshatras make up the zodiac signs so now purvashada nakshatra is having a so there's an interesting game going on in purvashada now because saturn is now in purvashada but saturn is retrograde and as we all know ketu is always retrograde so now what is happening saturn and ketu are both moving backwards apparently from the view of the earth and because of this they are in very 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 tight proximity very tight conjunction and they will be moving retrograde till september and ketu will always be retrograde of course and around after september saturn will go direct so now what's happening is depending on the houses which saturn is ruling depend uh, according to your ascendant uh, you will feel that uh, there are certain areas of your life which you are being tested upon to see if you can live without those houses that's what ketu does does whenever he's conjunct with any planet he gives you a feeling temporarily that okay what if this planet did not the, these these houses did not exist in my life so let's give an example suppose uh, somebody is a leo ascendant for example so for a leo lagna which houses saturn rules ascendant all right not moon sign saturn rules the 6th house and the 7th house because capricorn and aquarius is in 6 and 7 simultaneously so now Uh, for leo ascendants they could get a feeling that what if there was no daily work in my life what if there was no marriage in my life all right these kind of feelings could be there now what you will face and what you will feel that will depend on the dashas because dashas have the ultimate say in your horoscope which dasha you are running which houses the dasha lord is you know the lord is ruling and uh, which house the dasha lord is placed which antar dasha you are running which pratyantar you are running so that ultimately speaks and the transits will try to adjust themselves according to the houses of the concerning to the dasha lord they do not speak outside of them because they cannot speak so now interestingly purvashada is also very famous for initiating things because they say that purvashada is related to declaring wars but when ketu transits this nakshatra what can happen is we can become so obsessed that we forget the purpose behind the war as they used, one of my gurus used to say that operation is successful but the patient is dead which means you get so much caught up in the technicalities <coughs> that at the end you forget the reason why you were fighting that is what happened to dantavakra he was so angry so angry so angry on krishna he personifies one of the anarthas the anartha of anger actually to literally personifies that he was so angry so angry so angry so that emotion is there in this planet ketu because ketu is the higher version of mars if it is placed in a bad way it can come out in a difficult uh, in ways which are very difficult for us to handle so now this transit can give us that feeling that in some area of your life you are feeling that enough is enough i need to make the change now or i need to tell everybody else i need to declare a war on somebody or on something in some part of your life but when you are doing that you have to sit down and ask yourself this question why do i want to achieve that what do, don't 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 just be obsessed with the path or the result just sit and think 
why at all do you feel the need why why that urge is coming inside you because many times we make we, we get obsessed with making certain changes in our lives but we don't know exactly how that is going to benefit us for example sometimes people tell me that oh uh, i am staying in this country but there's not much employment here i want to move to a foreign country for better employment so can you please look at my horoscope and tell me will i go to foreign lands and if yes then when well it's great to go to a country which has more uh, opportunities for employment there's nothing wrong with that that's perfectly fine at the same time you just want to become happy in life so the problem is sometimes that we we put our happiness into such external things like you know money or opposite sex most of the times so you are actually not wanting to come abroad to a better country for employment for money you are actually coming for happiness so you have to make sure that even if you come come to a different country as an individual will you be happy can you stay alone away from your family or for you away from your friends away from your culture will you be happy when you do that because that's the ultimate purpose of coming outside right if you are only becoming unhappy as an individual what will you do by earning money that money will be like poison to you so that's what happens to many people they say that oh we were in india and then we came to the united states we came to london we came to germany sometimes and then we are not happy here although we are earning good money so the purpose of coming is defeated so that is what i want to hint here that we should know what tangibly the changes will be in our life when we make certain decisions and keeping that ultimate fulfillment in our in our mind we should make changes just do not make changes in the periphery just don't make changes because it seems good ask yourself this question is it is it going to help me in my long run in the long in the long term is it going to if if you are doubtful then think 10 times before you make that decision but now when ketu is there you could have a tendency that no 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 we will do it first and then we will see because the problem with tamoguna is they do it first and then they regret they re- lament they repent later but satoguna means you first think and then you act that is a trait of satoguna so it is very essential that you read uh, scriptures like the shrimad bhagavatam where you know such stories are mentioned like dantvakra then then you will know how to make good decisions in life all right otherwise we could sometimes be headlessly going on just doing things at the surface thinking that one imaginary day will come when everything will fall into place but even if things fall into place there are many things which could fall out of place all right so we need to ensure that when we are making things fall in place other things are not falling out of place so at the end the whole picture matters it's not about the details it's about the higher picture all right so this is what i wanted to share regarding this ketu transit and what that area is to what extent it will help you it will all depend on your individual horoscope and your placements where ketu is placed where saturn is and which planets are in sagittarius and where is jupiter and the dashas that you are running all right thank you very much for your patience and i hope this helps you okay and if you want a consultation from regarding this you could go down to my website below and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is interested to know about this okay god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him okay bye bye